too much self-pleasure time. <laughs> All that movement, he's wrecked it. And Francesco's oh. still here. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's for me. Yet. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, quick and easy one, because we all have either to recover or football to watch. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's talk, uh, let's talk, uh, Mike's act, well, it's going to be Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, and then a bit of Final Fantasy, which sort of loops into things. Um, so the merger, it could fall apart, according to insiders. Go on, Alessio, yeah. talk to us. Yeah, um, this past week uh, there was a new report uh, published by the New York Post uh, and apparently they have talked to some insiders uh, who, who claim that Microsoft did not expect this this level of scrutiny, you know, this, uh, this kind of probe. And uh, this also, according to the rumor, uh, kind of uh, created uh, a bit of a rift between uh, Activision and Microsoft because, okay. of course, Activision uh, uh, wants to wants the deal to happen at all costs, you know, since it is very very lucrative for them. And uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, they might. Uh, the idea is that they might not necessarily want the same if if. Uh, you know, if uh, regulators uh, uh, put, uh, you know, some very uh, strong limitations on them, like, okay, we can we can pass this, but only if you, like, put in writing that you are never going to leave Call of Duty, you know, uh, out of uh, PlayStation or as an exclusive mm -hmm. to your platforms. Uh, I guess that's one stipulation that Microsoft... Uh, you know, as we've discussed, they have pledged to to keep it on PlayStation and possibly port it to other platforms, but to to get you know a, a, a kind of binding uh, agreement that they never can they could never do it. I don't know if they if they would go for that <laughs> because they they would be like they could be like you know we're paying seventy billion dollars for what? Yes, of course we. They're going to get a lot more revenue through Activision Blizzard, and uh, but I don't know. I guess uh, the the idea is that they might want to to you know rethink it and see if it's really worth for them. Although, of course, uh, as we as we have stated, it's just a rumor for now. So uh, actually, after this report by the New York Post, there was also I think. Uh, a new uh, Activision Blizzard report uh, for investors, and uh, as far as they've said, you know, publicly, you know, they still expect this deal to go to go through to to pass. Um, you know, before I think it's June 2023, uh, that should be the date. So you know, officially they are still uh, estimating that this will go through. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, I, I'm not sure if I buy that Microsoft uh, was not expecting this kind of probe because honestly, it would have been naive of them. I <laughs> I don't I I actually think they were probably expecting this because of one reason: it's the games industry. The mm. games industry doesn't usually get any mm. sort of. People just think, oh, they're gaming companies. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah. The, the uh, I think uh, earlier this month we also got the news about uh, the European Union's uh, regulation, and they were they also uh, basically are looking into a deeper review of this deal with a sort of a phase two. And uh, actually, there was also one of the members of uh, the regulation, the, you know, the regulatory body in the European Union. <laughs> he kind of caused a controversy because he, he tweeted, 
don't worry, we will make sure that uh, uh, Call of Duty stays on PlayStation. Uh, and it, it basically also said that uh, he, want, he owns a PlayStation and wanted to keep playing Call of Duty on, on PlayStation. So when, uh, when, when the tweet went live, uh, lots of uh, Xbox fans <laughs> were like, this is a conflict of interest. Mm. Uh, you know, others well, but this is just in jest. So it was kind of, uh, you know, uh, maybe he could have saved it, but uh, I don't know. The the funny thing is that at this point, if Call of Duty wasn't involved, there wouldn't have been an issue. It's it's just that serious that it's a problem at this point because it's the it's the one they always name drop. I mean, Activision Blizzard as Diab- Diablo, Overwatch, many other things, but None it's Call of Duty. That money. Yeah, it's Call of Duty. It's the, the real problem for this. Yeah, which, which I guess ties into another news, which uh, basically saw Modern Warfare 2 breaking records once again for the series, and uh, they have uh, they have surpassed one billion in revenue already in 10 days so it's uh, it's a new record for uh, <laughs> an already record breaking series yeah and uh, yeah. this and isn't that's... going to make things easier for microsoft yeah. i think most of the sales most of the sales are on playstation so yeah this, yeah absolutely. this isn't going to make things any easier now of course not and and I I mean I as I say I genuinely believe them when they said they they weren't expecting this level of sort of scrutiny and pushback if only because they were thinking like I just said it's the games industry there's never the only time the games industry had this sort of attention was when you know in like in Australia or something or where where whoever was it America or Australia that Jack Thompson on about Rockstar. Ah, uh, yeah. You mean yeah. you mean that GTA shouldn't shouldn't have been sold because it yeah, was... essentially that's yeah. the last time. The only times games yeah. in the industry seems to get so, get any attention is when when they're just trying to blame it for everything that's wrong in the world, mm. same as they did yeah. with films and everything in the past. So, yeah. but yeah, this sort yeah. of level of scrutiny sort of just shows that games as an industry really is on the map, prop, full and proper now. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, you're right. Of course, uh, usually politicians only mention video games uh, whenever there is some kind of shooting. Mm. And uh, but uh, on the other end, you know, this deal is a lot of money. So of course, yeah. uh, politicians aren't known to to scheme over these kind of things. You know, uh, they are very much into into this. Uh, you know, getting their ends on this kind of deals and, you know, manipulating them or, or, well, you know, just in this case, uh, fairly reviewing them if you want. But, you know, the thing is with a deal of this size, I think, honestly, Microsoft should have <laughs> expected. Uh, oh, they should have, the, but, yeah. Uh, because it's a lot of money. I think it's one of the biggest deals, you know, not, never mind the, in- the gaming industry because it's like... Uh, Ten times the biggest deal mm. before before it in the gaming industry, but you know, just overall, it's one of the biggest deals of the past few years overall in tech. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, it's going to get scrutiny. Hey dear, and yeah, Modern Warfare Two, a billion. I, yeah, I'm. It, it's a video game, I think, maybe. I haven't played it, so I'm, I, I can't really pass judgment. And it's a first-person shooter, and it's a, and it's a first-person shooter with multiplayer. I, I expect that I, I won't be playing it anytime soon. Uh, you know, it's uh, I've played the beta before I I got this injury, in, and yes. uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like I think I said it uh, briefly in uh, one of the podcasts, but. Uh, uh, I guess it was summed by some of the other reviews as well. Uh, Infinity Ward just, you know, they proved once again they are the best studio, uh, Call of Duty studio, I mean. Uh, so uh, I think... 
I don't know if they were. I mean, they sort of dropped off, but yeah, maybe they maybe they're back. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's got something for everybody. Of course, it's it's still Call of Duty, you know, uh, at its core. So it's not like if if you don't like Call of Duty at all. It's not going to change your mind, but if you do like Call of Duty, it's really got, yeah, I think, something for everybody because, you know, it's got a campaign and uh, it's got lots of multiplayer modes, uh, new mechanics, and also it's uh, basically now integrated with the new World Zone, which was also developed by Infinity World. And uh, so there's lots of. Uh, Co-op mods as well. It's getting actual raids post-launch, yeah. apparently. So even for, you know, usually Call of Duty is very much geared towards uh, PvP competitive players, but this time it's also there is also PvE content for for even uh, you know maybe some people that are uh, fed up with Destiny or they don't want to. They want a change. They could look into Modern Warfare too. So uh, they are kind of trying to cover all their bases now. With uh, with Warzone, they are also going to feature uh, the DMZ mod, which is basically their take on Escape from Tarkov, which is one of the uh, newest trends in shooters, uh, the extraction shooter. So you basically you go into the map. And you you are at risk because you you may lose your inventory, but you can also of course gather new things that you can then you know bring with yourself in the next matches if you do succeed in exfiltrating. So uh, it's going to have that as well. And uh, but you know I think going back to Microsoft, <clears throat> I think. Uh, maybe they could get away if uh, if they agree to basically uh, put Call of Duty forever on uh, multi platforms like Minecraft, basically. But they, you know, they choose to not to do the same with uh, other big IPs like uh, even Diablo. Maybe not Diablo Four, but you know, other Diablos, uh, Warcraft, you know. Uh, kind of everything else could be, I think, could be exclusive, and uh, there's not much they could say about it. Uh, regulators, I mean, uh, because while they are big, they are not nearly something that could foreclose, you know, the market as as they have been uh, saying. Uh, so I think that's uh, probably the best stipulation <laughs> they could get away with if they want to close this deal. If not. Yeah. It's not even that bad for them if they agree to leave Call of Duty multi-platform because it's still money coming in. Uh, I think it's more something like it's something that uh, it's more like to say, not to say face, you know, but just to say um, Call of Duty is exclusive to that. But it's not like they're losing money if they leave it uh, if they leave it on PlayStation. So I, I think if if they have to do that, it, it won't be that bad for them. In the end, yeah, I just you know, I just don't know about Game Pass because obviously they they would want to to put Call of Duty and every other game on Game Pass yeah. as soon as possible. But I think uh, you know, due to previous uh, Sony and Activision contracts, I think they cannot put uh, put it on Game Pass until uh, twenty twenty five. So I've read because of. Uh, you know, like I said, contracts uh, made by Sony and Activision in the past years. So that that would be bad, I think, for them, because still three years uh, without Call of Duty, even though they they buy the, the whole company uh, on Game Pass. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I guess uh, it's also interesting because uh, you know, just close just to close the topic, but. Basically, everyone has uh, spoken on this topic, uh, at least giving out uh, you know, an early judgment, the UK, the, U- the European Union, but uh, we're still waiting to hear from the US 
actually, from the yeah. FTC. So they are taking this with time. And uh, I guess it, it might be the, the biggest, uh, you know, uh, judgment of them all, uh, probably the most important. So we'll see what they do. Uh, because a lot of the early concerns were about the FTC, uh, since their, uh, their chair, uh, chairwoman basically is known to be anti-tech, uh, anti-big tech. So anti-consolidation. Uh, well, who knows? I, uh, I just, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I, the more I look at it, the more I think about it, the the more sense it would make for me to just not let the deal happen because it will, as much as Microsoft will want to say that, well, it won't make them, you know, they'll still only be the third biggest in the games industry. In reality, they'll, that, that will put them above Sony because they'll have the ability to take so much away from Sony. They do already, but we'll see. We'll see. And yeah. speaking of taking away, let's see. We've got Sony potential. Well, yeah, we've got Sony taking something away for six months. I mean, it's not quite the same, but it's yeah. still the industry as always. Final Fantasy yeah. 16, PlayStation 5 exclusive for six months. I'm not surprised. I don't think Sony will should just buy Square Enix and get it over and done with, <laughs> just to prove me right, but there you go. Just to prove you right. They, they... Just for that, yeah. Yeah, just for that. Just for that. Just for that. No, other real, no other reason. I don't there know. I don't no know at this reason. point with this, you know, with this timed exclusives, I don't know if Square Enix has more to gain. But continuing to yeah, do this for a while. Do. Oh, of course. Yeah, they do. you know <laughs> that. Besides six months, is really nothing. Yeah. You know, it's, you know. Yeah, like I said, like a, like I wrote uh, in the article, it's it was like that for uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. They had six months. So. Uh, you know, the thing is, uh, I think the the saying is. Uh, at least six months, if I'm correct. So they uh, could extend it. If uh... it actually says six months on that video, so we don't know if it's at least six mm. months. But yeah, of course, it's not like they have to release on PC the moment it uh, the moment exclusivity ends. But they did so with the Integrate, like they released it right sick on the Epic Game Store. They released it on. Like exactly six months after it released on PlayStation Five, so I think it's big enough that they would want to do something like that. At least on PC, we don't know about Xbox. But... Yeah, uh, no, it's interesting because uh, yeah, like you said, Square Enix uh, kind of gets a double tap because they also do the six month. Uh, Epic Game Store exclusive, or at least they did with the uh, remake, the seven, seven remake. Yeah. So we don't, basically... we don't know. If, yeah, we don't know if they're going to do the same again. Yeah. Uh, the the next right. big one isn't an exclusive. Well, big one. We we think it will be big enough. It's for spoken. It's it's coming on Steam at the same time. So I don't know That's if they true. really put that away or just doing it on a game to game basis. Yeah, but, you know, I think uh, Epic uh, is probably willing to shell a lot more for Final Fantasy XVI than for, for, for Spoken, you know? So, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, even though for Spoken is actually looking uh, better in the last few minutes. Yeah, so it, you know, the, fu the funny thing is they shelled out money for Stranger of Paradise. That it has sold like shit pretty much on every platform. So I, I don't know that what their strategy is. When it comes to taking exclusives, yeah, they, they are weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Like uh, Neo, the, the World Ends with You. It's another game that hasn't sold that well, and yeah. it just released on Steam like last month. Well over a year since the original release on the Epic Game Store. So I, I don't know. They have a weird strategy. It feels like they're throwing darts at the board, and what strikes? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. It doesn't make much sense. 
But who knows? Maybe the, maybe it makes sense to them. I don't think anything makes sense to anybody anymore. <laughs> it's no. all fooked. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, uh, don't yeah. be so... So, Positive. you know, yeah, <laughs> Positive, right? It's the games uh, industry. Nothing. The, nobody seems to make sense. So it's like, yes, spend spend an insane amount of money on six months deals and keep doing that in um, in perpetuity, rather than just buy the company. Or you know, <laughs> or add loot boxes to everything and make yourself look like scum. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Maybe Sony doesn't want to buy them. We haven't talked. You say you say it makes sense, but now you said that nothing makes sense. So maybe oh, Sony yeah. doesn't want to buy them. You're probably, you probably you you could actually be right since since it's the <laughs> logical choice. It probably won't happen. <laughs> it probably won't. Anything that's the logical choice won't happen. So instead, they'll go out and I don't know. They'll buy. Oh God knows somebody crap. They'll, they'll buy... Platinum Games. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, they can't. Well, yeah. I don't know. They'll they'll go out and buy that, you know, one of those indie developers that pushes, you know, just quickly manufactured shit out onto, the, onto Steam. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. yeah, I use developers very loosely. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean... No. I think that's yeah. We've all, we've covered everything quite quickly there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's yeah. think of something to fill up ten more minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, there... uh, I played a lot of stuff. So if you want to hear me rambling about, go things... on. Yeah, fill us. <laughs> I've I've not been playing a massive amount due to hospital visits, works at work, mm. and other things. Though I have now got that. I, I'm not finishing that sentence. Mm. <laughs> I, I've been playing football manager. We'll put it that well. Uh, it, well, I haven't much, but yeah, anyway. So yeah, tell us what you've been playing. Fill fill us oh. eight minutes. So yeah, I'm going to be quick because I could talk about four different things. But I'm I'm just going. I'm, I'm, I'll be quick. Yeah. First one is tactics Ogre reborn. Okay. We already talked him about it briefly the last time. And now I can because the embargo. I can talk about it more because the embargo is over. And it's a very. I, I think it's a Square Enix best remaster in a long, long time. They put a lot of care into it. It plays great. It looks. It looks decent enough. So there's that usual uh, filter they use for uh, 2D remasters that sometimes doesn't look that good. And it, in close-ups, it doesn't look good. It looks better when the. When the view is zoomed out, it looks much better. And it plays great. It has tons of quality of life changes that just make the game feel more modern in, uh, in some ways. And the story is, uh, I think we said that last time, but the story is exactly like the original and it's still very, 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 very good. It's like, you know, it's like Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. It has all those things, political scheming uh, and magic mixed in and it's, very good, and there are some there are some great story moments that you have to choose between being a shit and being a total shit. Oh, <laughs> so so that, very that's, diverse yeah. then. Be crap or yeah. be crap. You, yeah, you know, that's whatever you do is still the wrong choice, but that <laughs> it and it's still good. You know, this game is the original is almost thirty years old, and yeah. it's still as good as it. It's good. It's still as good as it used to be. So I'm very I'm very happy that Square Enix put some love into that because. You know they don't do the they they don't always do this with remasters like the Chrono Cross remaster from earlier this year was eh, it was all over the place it was yeah. not that good. So second thing is Sonic Frontiers, which has become the most controversial game uh, of this 2022, with people saying that it's crap and other people saying that it's good. I'm I'm with the people that say that it's good. Though it has, it, it has its issues. Yeah. Like, you know, level design seems to be all over the place because you have those, the rails, the bumpers scattered. It's Team Sonic, so don't expect something to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, but it's much better. I think it's the best 3D Sonic game since a long, long, long time. Again. 
You know, I, but it's not that hard. You know, I I know it's not that it's not that difficult. But so that's a very low bar. Yeah, you know, I I uh, while it's not really original, I think Sonic Generations is a very good game. But you know, it was just recycled stuff, pretty much. So I, I think I think Sonic Frontiers at least attempts to do something something original, even though it recycles a lot of things. Uh, you know, it, it's the usual. Uh, it's usual that Sega has has them rush for the holiday release. And once again, it's like it's a tradition by this point. And uh, I I think it's good. It, it has its issues. It's not perfect, but it, it's a functional game, and it's something that we can't usually say about Sonic the Hedgehog games because bugs everywhere. And it's I think it's fine. I I, I think. Uh, players have uh, accept. Um, players are liking it more than critics somehow, which you know it it does happen sometimes. But yeah, I I think uh, you know I think some people have been too critical because I and un- I understand that you know there are if you want to do an open world game you have to do ser- things in a certain way. But it's Sonic. It was supposed to be a disaster and it isn't. So he at least he at least shows that Sega is willing to. Um, Put in some effort to make better games. Then the end results are are decent this time around. But if they build if they build upon this, it, the next one will be will be good. Generally good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was uh, just going to say that. Uh, uh, I think um, the news is that uh, on Steam, at least, uh, the game is doing very well in terms of sales and also reception. I think it, it's uh, overwhelmingly positive uh, yeah. with the user review score. So it's, uh, I think users are liking it. Uh, yeah, there were some, uh, <laughs> some really low reviews I, I've seen, but... Uh, yeah, maybe, you know, it's probably, well, I played it on PC, so no technical issues for me, but like on Switch, it looks very, very bad. Probably on older gen consoles too, but, you know, if you have to judge the game by how the game plays, then it's, those low scores are, I think they're undeserved. Uh, it's very gamey, if you know, you know, and you just have a, it's not like the, this ultra realistic thing. You just have to, yeah, okay, there are bumpers everywhere. Who cares? It's Sonic. I mean, they, the, but I think, I, you know, I, and I, I have to say that we, we should thank Paramount for the two movies because I think the two movies did much, much they've, for this game. They've done a lot to bring the series a bit back, yeah. Yeah, and you can tell the developers have, have taken inspiration from them for a lot of things. And it's good because the movies are good. So uh, yeah, it could be the start of a renaissance for uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog, which is cool. You know, it's, it's cool, yeah. <laughs> but we are, we like to see how, we, you know the the thing with Sonic theme is that they get something good that the next game they throw everything away to start over from scratch. So hopefully they won't do it this time. That's oh, that, that, that. it's on them, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Not to throw away the good they've done right now. Uh, oh, they, and, I'm uh, sure they'll manage it. I'm sure they'll manage it. To throw everything uh, away, it's very likely. They've managed to do it a few times. You know, they'll make a <laughs> decent Sonic game, then they'll just completely fuck it up. Essentially, they're like the platform version of Capcom when it comes to like Resident Evil manages the same thing. Good game, bring the series up. And probably get a bit comfortable, and then make a shit game to which they have to then make a good game again. Well, in, they've recovered a bit from from this in the yeah oh yeah in yeah the past but... few years yeah since uh, since Resident Evil Seven they kind of got things right. I know, but there's all you know the 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 yeah the tradition is there, so we'll yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> We'll yeah. see. Well, the thing is, when, whenever management changes, the risk is always there, and management yeah. changes pretty quickly, pretty easily. Oh dear. Uh, um, did you pl- 
Did you play anything else, um, Francesco? Uh, well, I'm going. I'm just going to be very quick about uh, two things. Yeah. Well, the first one is I I tried Bayonetta three, and I'll just say that I'm happy I did not buy it. <laughs> I'll just Ooh. say that. Ooh, yeah. Uh, um, I, I will it. eventually buy it. I will eventually buy it down the line, but. It's not Bayonet. It's not the game I would have liked it to be, because uh, combat is great, but there are too many set pieces, distractions. Like it feels like you're never playing the game, really. Mm. And well, this is just an impression from like two hours with the game, so it might change. But it made me realize how good Devil May Cry Five is compared to it. Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm a little disappointed. I'm glad I did not buy it. <laughs> I'll buy it when the price drops. But for now, I I think I've had enough. Well, the other the other game is God of War Ragnarok. But I mm. guess you could talk about that too because you probably completed it and I did not yet. Yeah. Well, I didn't complete it because I was about to, but then um, the the injury struck. But yeah, I, I almost almost did. And uh, yeah, no, I just, uh, you know, uh, Agnese had to do the review because uh, I couldn't, but uh, uh, like I told you, I think um, I, I, you know, don't think it's a uh, worth of a perfect score, but it's uh, very, very close to that. Uh, like I said, the, the only real, uh, the only real gripe is that uh, you can see it's very much still a PS4 game, uh, of course. And, uh, you know, there are limitations to, to how you can explore the world. Uh, and they are pretty, pretty obvious. Like, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, freely move between certain areas. Uh, I mean, you, can, uh, you can't even jump. I mean, you, you only jump contextually, right? So it's, uh, uh, but you know, other than that, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, in every way, I think uh, combat uh, has been refined further. Uh, puzzles are great, I think. So uh, you know, personally, for me, it's uh, nine point five. I'd say. Uh, so yeah, it's still an amazing, an amazing game, and. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see when when it gets to PC. I, hopefully, not far away, and uh, it will be it will be even better. Of course, uh, you know, if you have a VRR compatible display, uh, you can still play in performance mode. So it's, uh, I think, it, it, you know, it goes between seventy and ninety FPS in that mode. Mm, yeah. So. Uh, it feels very responsive, even on, on PlayStation. Of course, uh, the, the resolution drops a bit, but uh, it still looks great. Uh, so, uh, I'd say if you are into the genre, it's uh, it's an absolute must. Yeah, it has a very great beginning. I was actually surprised by how it began, how it begins. Well, and, and yeah. anyway. I, th- I said this so many times, but I love the authentic tour they've done. I, I, I would even say even the authentic Odin, because I like their, uh, the way they portray them. So it's very, it's, it's very in line with the myths in many, many ways. Even the first one was, but we didn't get to see many gods. Yeah. Many gods. But he, I'm really loving this. It's probably the... The best representation I've seen of the Norse gods in video games, and the, this is high praise from the Norse, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, local, it, yeah, local yeah, it, Norse it, it, lord master. It is, yeah, it is, because you know it's. Agnese said the same in the review. That's you know it, it feels it they 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 have read the source of the Norse Norse mythology, which is the Edda. It's called. And yeah. and they studied it well. I have to say they studied it well. So I, I'm I'm curious to see how things will proceed because I I played like six hours of Arson still. 
I'm yeah, still very early. I still, uh, there's there's a lot to do. It's it's a big game, you know. Even if it's not open world, mm. it it can easily last over fifty hours. I think if you go, go and do everything, you know, the side uh, quests and mm. and stuff. So it's it's also very big and uh, well. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, uh, I, Chris, I, I'm, uh, I already, I already am. I'll, I'll have to stop playing for a week because I'll be away. But I'll Chris, get did you yeah. play the first God of War? I like the the reboot. Uh, I think I played a bit of it. I think I played a bit of it, and no, I'd never finish it. I've got, I'll, I need to finish it eventually. But yeah, yeah. it's time, time. There's never enough time. <laughs> Yeah, but it, if if it was called God of War Manager, you would be all over it. God total, of total, total God of War. God of, God of, God of Total War. <laughs> oh well. Right. Well, I mean, I've said I've been, I've not really played much lately due to yeah. many commitments. So yeah. there's nothing really much for me, and well, we know you haven't been playing anything, unless you. Yeah, no. So um, yeah, just we've just yeah. had you then, Francesco. It's been a quick yeah. one. We will be back doing proper ones soon, maybe. Yeah. Depends. Yeah, how. I think next. I think Francesco is still. Uh, yeah, I'm still away. Available. Week, oh yeah. well, we'll get there eventually. Two weeks. Yeah, so yeah, weeks. we'll probably see you in about two weeks' time then. Yeah, yeah. It's vac- vacation for the readers as well. Right. The... Well, enjoy yourself on your prostitute <laughs> trip, Francesco. <laughs> well, if you've been to Paris, maybe you know better than I do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Rouge. Because it's my first time in France. Oh so. I've, God, I've been to Paris tons of times. <laughs> it's nice. Just don't eat escargot. I will not because I can't fucking think about doing that because they do it over here too. No, they, not for me. Uh, here, here, but no. Not right. Right. Well, <laughs> we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. So. See you in a bit. Bye. 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 Bye.